get the time coming out of the thing or
погода.
Ale.
the thread. against here is in fact the Napier Deltic. Mm -hmm. It's a 16 uh, 18 cylinder engine and it's in a shape like that. That's the shape. So the six banks of those three pistons. So you've got a, a piston working there, you've got another one working there and you've got one along the bottom. So you've got three opposed pistons in each bank. So each particular engine gives you 1,750 horsepower, so you've got 3,300 in total. Basically this part of the engine, uh, engine room, is a mirror of the other end. The other end is obviously in reverse, so what you're seeing at the other end is basically what you see here. Uh, there is a fire detection system fitted, and we'll see that in just a few seconds. And it's the sort of thing that you see in a lot of commercial buildings, where they have like a little... So if you want to move along, mind your head as you come along here. Yes, look at the boiler. Yeah. Oh, midships. Yeah. Direction. So who's is this? It's stones or? Uh, it probably is a stone. I haven't seen any name on it, but it probably is a stone. What do you say there? Can you read that? The Clarkson. Clarkson. Oh, Clarkson, is it? All mm. right. Stones were approaching 150 tons, right. and they were quite heavy. So, apparently, the saving in weight in this locomotive is, in fact, in the engines, by the alloy metals that they use. Not in particularly of the engine that you saw further, further back. It's a mirror. There's your generator, of course, in the, in the, the other end of the engine. And either of these two engines can provide power for the Deltic. Mm -hmm. um, they can shut one down and it will still run. Originally this was geared at 95, but apparently during tests it was re-geared to 105 That's right. and uh, it, it proved very successful. The other thing that I understand was while this was on test there was a riding engineer That's right. on mm -hmm. board and he was on board all the time. Mm -hmm. This was based at Finsbury Park that's where the heavy maintenance and any maintenance was done on it, which is uh, uh, the, the first station out of King's Cross, Finsbury Park. It's a big locomotive depot. You can't even find it anymore. No, it's gone. It's probably uh, houses. It's all over going. Probably it's houses. You can't see a thing. No, no. It's disgusting. And uh, the engineer would ride in this train and just try and imagine this train travelling at 105 miles an hour, perhaps with both engines going, or perhaps just with one engine going. And he learned his call while he's doing that. And his uh, the idea of that was 
With it being a new locomotive, a new engine, uh, as far as this is concerned, it was on test and he was there to try and diagnose and repair anything that he could. He couldn't obviously do everything if it was heavy stuff. But of course, initially the idea was that this engine could be replaced in eight hours. And it was. And it was initially. Mm -hmm. That's quite correct. But what they didn't tell you was to achieve that period of time, <laughs> the riding engineer had to work on the disconnect on, on the stopped engine while the train was running, disconnect all the pipes and the cords and everything else, so that when it got to Finsbury Park, all they had to do was to lift the roof off and whip it out and put another one in. Back in traffic in 12 hours. Exactly. But later on, when the production models were actually in production, the 22, with the Eastern Region, it was a little bit too time constraining. And what they said was, get it to us uh, on a Monday morning and you can have it back on a Wednesday night. That's right. Um, you had a replacement engine. And, and that seemed to work and that's the way it worked. Okay. Happy days. Happy days. <laughs> I don't know about that for the engineer who was riding. <laughs> when these delicates we've got left now, turn out from the main line. Yeah. One of the lads rides in with the engine. Yeah. To listen to oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what amazes me this control cubicle because you've got the big curtain on the production room. That's right. That's you right. Yeah. No, you can't. They won't allow us to, uh, even we can't sit on them. So, if you want to move into the cab now, <coughs> you've got the bars everywhere. Yeah, there. There's a bit of stuff in there. Everybody okay? Yeah. Uh, I thought it was five of us. And we lost one. One, one two, three, four. Own. I was the last. Oh, we were the last, right? I was the last. Oh, right, I thought. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure there was. I'm not counting myself in. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So, what you've got here is the number one end in the Deltic. Um, the controls, this was probably in 1955 a bit of an innovation because generally engines in those days didn't have speedometers. I know the Western region ones, a few did have them, uh, but they weren't universal. So, this was quite a sort of a new invention. I don't know whether this I don't think it changed very much on the production models. Uh, I've driven 16. It's oh, yeah. quite different. Is it different? Okay, fair enough. So what you've got is your controller here. Did you, when you drove 16, did you ever get the problem of wheel slip at 80 miles an hour? No, I never took it up to there, no. Oh, didn't you? Right. Well, apparently, uh, when it was on test, the drivers were finding that when they got up to 80 miles an hour and started to accelerate, um, they had wheel slip, which mm. sounds rather strange Fantastic, to get 80 mile an hour wheel slip. Yeah, yeah. And apparently what the engineers found was the number of notches in, in this. And you, do you all understand what I mean by the notches? These lads won't probably. Right, mm -hmm. well, for example, this one might have four notches. So you can pull it round to one and then to two and it's very clear there's a click or like a detent in it up to three and then to four and they found that the power being applied for each additional detent that they used was just too much mm. the, the the diesel and the generator were actually putting too much power into the wheels so what they did they found the solution was in increasing the number of detents so instead of for example having four they perhaps doubled the number to eight so you got one eighth of the power instead of one quarter and apparently that solved it. And uh, as far as I'm aware, that was uh, what they did eventually on the production model. These 66s have seven notches. Seven of the new ones. Yeah. 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 But we're, we're so, not seven on one of those. Yes. It's two of these sat here. Yes. You can't have a conversation. No. It's too much noise here. Well, uh, one of the things you mentioned was about noise and, and what happened over here. And apparently the drivers complained of the noise coming in through the engine room, even with the door shut. Mm -hmm. So apparently, in the first instance, they gave them earmuffs. That's right. <laughs> and the drivers apparently said, well, you know, we can't read the road, we can't hear the road. Uh, when I talk about the track, obviously, you know. Uh, so then, apparently, they put a big curtain across it. Now, I don't think I can see anything here, no, no, which no, actually never suggests it was on here. No. So it might have only been on the production model. It's just a setback. Was a bit further back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they put a curtain in here, which um, I think they complained about the fact that they felt as we're in a tiny little box 
you know, in a very enclosed area. What actually happened after that, I don't know. Any ideas on the curtain at all? It worked. It, it worked, did it? Good enough, yeah. And they accepted it. They <laughs> yeah. accepted it, did he? It's a leather curtain, you know. It's, oh, was it? Good every job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that that would deaden it. It's a good one. Yeah, yeah. So, it would appear that it, it was accepted eventually on there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, it ran until round about 1963, I think. And I believe there was an engine problem in 63. Mm. And it was withdrawn. And it never ran again. And eventually it went to the National Science Museum in Kensington. And it was actually right in the doorway, uh, the National Science Museum. And... Um, so should have been a scoop operator on this. Yeah, side. that's right, yeah. There's something there, but we're not yeah. quite sure there's a hole. We think it was down there. And a hot plate. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it stayed in the doorway of the National Science Museum until 1993. And then they wanted to sort of refurbish the place and bring it up to date. And it went up to your... Are you, are you called Ken? Yeah. You've Hello. been shouted down yeah. there. Hello, Frank. Frank? Yeah. Right. Okay. Right, okay. So, uh, yeah. would you like to just shut that door? Yeah, cuss it up. And then uh, it went from there to York and uh, York to Shildon is where I last saw it oh. until it came here. We've got it until about October that next year at the present time. I've had it two years now. And uh, we've had quite a job getting agreement to have the public on board. Have you? Have you? Yeah. yeah. Right. And they've only allowed us two till four on a Sunday afternoon. Is that right? Wow. That's it. You can't sit on the seats because the leather, the leather is actually rotting away. Yeah. That's the reason you can't okay. sit on it. And that's one of the conditions What's that we get it, wasn't it? Yeah. Pardon? What's repairing? Oh, it wants repairing, but I don't think they want anything to do it. They want it kept as it was, yeah. as originally. And it wants know. to bring up main line. <laughs> <laughs> right, if you want to open that door, and if you'd like to walk down into the engine room, and then you can pass through and down to the, down the steps at the far end. When you go down the steps at the other end, will you please go down them backwards? Okay. Keep yep. hold of the rails. It's safer to do it that way. Can we leave you? No, I'm coming with you. And then we'd like to have a one. Uh, uh -huh. Can you walk the bottom, please? Uh, to, to the next gap. Okay. Remarkably clean. Oh, it is, yeah. They've done a nice job. They've done a nice job. These are swimming a lot. I mean, there's still a little bit, but yeah, but, you know, we're going to have these Where'd that come from? <laughs> anyway.
<laughs> oh, on, on the on the main line we're out of tail right. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 